Hey, what's going on guys? Daniel here from ModBod, and this is kind of a bittersweet video as it's gonna be the last video on the Annette A8 3D printer, at least for now. Uh, it's been a really long and fun journey over the past month or so as we basically assembled and upgraded just about every aspect of this printer. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into a few of the final add-ons that I installed since my last video on the printer, then I will give my final impressions on the printer and we will send it on its way. Uh, I made a video about a week ago that showed off all of the upgrades that I've done so far, and for those that are interested, there will be a link in the description that will take you to a log including all of the Thingiverse files, as well as the items I purchased for this upgrade, or all the upgrades, in case you are interested in doing any of them yourself. Uh, it was a pretty close to being finalized in my last video, but then I went ahead and installed an LED strip, which looks great, and it does a really good job of illuminating the print area. I also wired it up to a switch that I installed in the top right of the printer. Since I do sleep in the same room as my printer, the LEDs are really bright, and it's pretty difficult to sleep. My girlfriend does not like the LEDs on at night. On top of that, I added a nice little cover for the printer's electronics board. It has a 40 millimeter fan mounted to it, cooling the board while the printer is on. Uh, it turned out really great, however, it is extremely loud, which could be a combination of things. It could it could be because the fans were really cheap and so the bearings aren't very good, or it could be that because the fan is so close and I didn't do a super good job of organizing the wires underneath it, that the combination of that and the wires being so close to the fan is kind of illuminating the audio. Uh, but just be know, just you know, let it be known that if you do print the cover and you decide to go with the fan, that it could potentially increase the you know sound of your printer while it's running. I also added a little attachment that hooks up onto that board cover which allowed me to mount that separate MOSFET board uh, which is really nice because it keeps it out of the way and I don't have to worry about damaging it. Other than that, I changed the Bowden extruder setup to a much better and simpler version that I talked about in the last video that uses the stock extruder mounted on top right of the printer. Um, I've had much better results with the extruder setup than the one I had before. I also added a Raspberry Pi, which I just kind of ghetto rigged and zip tied it to the back of the LCD screen, which just allows the printer to be completely wireless, which is awesome. Cable management was really simple. All I really did was take some cable wraps as well as zip ties, and I did my best to kind of route everything as best as I could. For a summary of the cost of all the upgrades I made to this printer, it was roughly $100, which includes everything from the Raspberry Pi, the ATX power supply, the MOSFET board, the E3D style high end, and all the plastic prints that I added on. You can probably get away with even cheaper if you order some of the items from China and wait for the delivery, but that's kind of worst case scenario. All in all, I think this is a fantastic printer, and with the community behind it, I think it may be the best China kit printer you can get. Even without a single upgrade, it's really a solid printer. But as a bare minimum, I do recommend at least swapping the power supply and directly wiring the hotbed without the use of the plastic connectors just to kind of make it as fire safe as possible because I know that's a big worry, which makes sense for a lot of people. Uh, at the 220 by 220 by 240 millimeter build area, it is extremely large build area for a budget printer at a very low price tag of around 160 US dollars. I typically like glass over aluminum on the bed, but being able to use my sensor to auto level the bed with the aluminum did work out perfectly in the end and the prints are turning out phenomenally. I don't want to say it's an easy printer to assemble, but compared to a lot of the other printers that I have assembled, it really was not that difficult. And it did make that whole video series, um, so hopefully that will help you if you are trying to assemble this printer yourself, it's at least a nice reference. The default extruder that came with it really isn't half bad, and I do like the fact that they included lead screws instead of the kind of more cheap threaded rods that's standard with a lot of 3D printers. When going with a cheap China kit, you really want value, and this printer has that along with a great community of individuals that are helping each other and evolving this kit printer into one that can hang easily with the best of them. I really recommend this printer for those of you that are not afraid to put in some TLC as well as time to get to know the machine. I really hope you guys have enjoyed all of the Annette A8 videos, and please don't forget to smack the like button, subscribe for more 3D printing videos, and if these series have been helpful and you find them entertaining and you'd really like to help the channel out a little bit more, I will place a link in the description to my Patreon where you can do so. Once again guys, this has been Daniel from ModBot, thank you all so much, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in my next video. Peace guys!